All right, guys. So we've got Chris Prefontaine on the show today. We are super excited to have him here. He is a real estate guru. He's out of Rhode Island. So welcome, Chris, to the show today. Thank you for having me, Stephanie. Absolutely. So before we kick it off, let me just, let's give the audience a quick background on you, where you came from. I know you used to be an agent and you are no longer, but you're still in the real estate world. So give us an idea of where you've been and what you're doing now. Yeah. So I'll date myself here, but I've been at this since 91. So almost 30 years, um, started as a builder. I never built homes. I just teamed up with a builder okay. and then bought a realty executives franchise. That's when I put my realtor hat on after, you know, doing some tenure to get that and then sold that ultimately to Cobalt Banker in 2000. Oh, and then wow. from 2000 on just worked my own investments and started coaching others. But then the lovely debacle of 08, I call it happened. And that, just kicked our butt and made it, there was like a pivot. Are we going to go back into real estate? And if we do, how are we going to re-engineer this thing? Cause we can't be here again and be here again for us was like signing personal loans and, and committing cash and things like that. So we just totally re-engineered the business after the 08 crash to do what we do today, which is with my family, son and son-in-law, we buy uh, real estate on terms, which is lease purchase owner financing, primarily those two methods. Nice. So when 08 happened, were you out of kind of the day-to-day realtor world and mainly doing investing? Is that what you guys did? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, my son became a realtor like in 07 or 08. I resigned officially right around then so I could just work on my investments because it was a little bit of a conflict for me personally. I have students that do both. Um, So before that, yeah, I, I probably stopped actively being a realtor, maybe 2001. Right after I sold, I did a year there and I said, okay, enough. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the builder world when that all happened. I was selling new construction and then fun, the, fun. the 08 crash happened. And it was like, oh, wow. So, and so, so what do you do now? You run a school? Uh, we actually do, we do two things. So we buy and sell ourselves in three different states, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island. We do anywhere between two and four a month. We used to do as many as 10, but we've just been super picky now in the last five years. And then we go off and we help students all around North America, but it's mostly U.S., Okay. do deals. Like we get in the trenches, we talk to sellers and buyers with them. We actually construct the deals with them. So they're learning through our coaching program and we're revenue sharing. So we're doing the deal with them. Okay. Awesome. So I think this leads us to, so if you guys don't know, Chris is an author, best selling, and he's got a book called real estate on your terms, create continuous cash flow now without using your cash or your credit. Because I think this is what you learned from an 08, right? Was you had a lot of your own personal stuff That's in the market. That's what happened. Yeah. 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 So we, we, we basically by 2012 took four years of just complete chaos, digging out of that 08 debacle. And then in 2012, we launched the terms business and that book came out like in 2017 or 18 or so it's being revised right now, actually. Okay. So I want to get to that, but real quick, let's just do a quick state of kind of where we're at, especially I want to hear about in your world on the Northeast coast, as far as we're in, what is this end of June? So this episode will go out in a few weeks. We're in COVID-19. We're seeing a little bit of resurgence of it. We don't know what's going to happen this year with the election. We've got a lot of other social unrest going on. So what are you seeing in real estate and what are your students experiencing? Because you've probably got a good bird's eye view with helping people from all across the United States. Yeah, you said it. We do have a good uh, finger on the pulse because of that. So here's what we've, we've seen. So March, April, May, June, we're, it's about a tripling in business for them and, and for us. And there's a lot of reasons. I mean, there's uncertainty, like you just alluded to. They're in, in with realtors at the beginning of that. That was tough for them to even operate, as you know. Yep. So we have realtors, sellers, and buyers all calling us going help because the banks have raised the bar, right? Oh my gosh. Right Overnight. Overnight Crazy. on FHA, it was like, you got to have a what to get a loan? A credit Yeah, and jumbo, card? forget it. Yep. So we have million dollar properties calling us going help. Like I, I don't have buyers. So our we exit all our properties with a rent to own program while they get mortgage ready. So this is perfect for buyers that are stuck right now. Perfect. Okay. Some of them have cash, but they came to the closing table, as you know, and they get stuck. Because maybe they're furloughed or something. Oh, I'm sorry? If they're furloughed or something and they can't get the loan. Yeah, either that or they raise the credit bar or the down payment bar or the reserves bar. The, 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 okay. All three. And so they need time to, to go ahead and either save more, get their credit up, or yeah, in the job situation. Yeah. So we can help a lot of them. So like give you an example, like I, my husband still works for a builder. He sells new construction. 
And then I work with a lot of clients that are buying new homes. So there have, there's been like, I've noticed like a 30 day delay where the closings are getting pushed and they're getting pushed because unfortunately there are some people that are furloughed and they just can't get the loan right now. So would that be something, what, what, give me the process Would yeah, yeah. We reach out to you and your team and say, Hey, we're in Dallas. I've got a buyer that, you know, has great credit. It qualifies for the loan with their normal job, but they're furloughed. They still want to move forward on this home with the builder. Do you just go in and close as an investor? How does that work? No, good question. So we don't we don't close on any of the homes with a bank loan or cash. So if a seller says to us or a builder, said we do work with builders too. They don't want to flip homes right away. They want to prolong the capital gains per se. We will go in there and say, look, we'll pay the underlying debt if it's a lease purchase, or we'll buy it with the owner financing if it's free and clear. A lot of properties in the United States are still free and clear, a third of them. Mm -hmm. So when we either take control by the lease option or we bought it owner financing, we turn around and then put that buyer through the, our program, which is a rent to own program to get them to the mortgage ready place. It could be two years, three years down the road, but we know that going in. So we set them up to win. And, right. and so yes, COVID threw a lot more people at us, but prior to that, the numbers are high that of people that can go in the bank today, pre COVID, and get a loan real high, like real low rather, the real high they can't. So like 62 to 82% of the people, buyers, they can't get a loan. This is prior to COVID without like time, you know, tweaking credit, right. et cetera, et cetera. The buyer pool is huge in the terms of business because you can help them get to that path of ownership. And a lot of them gave up. They thought they couldn't do it. So let me make sure I'm understanding. So you would mm -hmm. or you would not close with the builder to get it off the builder? Uh, well, if it's free and clear, we can close and they'll be in first position like a bank. Okay. So we buy it, we buy that. If there's debt on the property, we usually do a lease purchase. Got it. So we would say to you as the builder, hey, uh, Stephanie, we're going to make that underlying debt payment you have of $1,500. I'm making that number up. Sure. And we're going to go out to our tenant buyer and charge them 18, 19, 2000, whatever. Got it. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So we control that property, the lease one. We don't own it. Right. We cloud the title with what's called the notice of option or memorandum of real estate, just so we have equitable interest. Got it. Okay. And then what are you telling your students as far as, because we're seeing the same, uh, my business partner and I are up for the year from the standpoint of, I think National Association of Realtors just came out with a statistic that said pre-owned sales are up 40% in May because they're looking a month back, which is historical. I don't know if it's ever... Yeah. raised grown that much in one month um but what are you telling your students kind of to navigate through covid whether it's how to do virtual listings how to do virtual buyer appointments like what are you seeing out there yeah we're doing both and we're doing all by zoom like you and i are now yep. um the the owners prior we started about a year and a half ago saying okay. to the owners hey we're either going to send our our boots on the ground we called it you know our, our representative or we're going to do it by virtual. Now, they weren't too keen on virtual until COVID. Right. So now they have no problem getting their phone out and walking through either FaceTime or Zoom and showing us the house. Like, right. No problem at all. Yep. And so a lot of them are doing that. And then as far as their activities, because you, me, like nobody knows. I said to you before the show, billionaires who are very successful don't know right. what's going to happen next. So I tell them, get up, keep on the phones because when there's another pullback, which I think there's going to be, meaning because of the uptake in COVID, like you said, yeah. I think there's going to be a lot more people needing help, buyers and sellers in a, in a big way. They just don't know. Like I'm listening to calls, live calls with our students and I'm hearing sellers go, you know, I, I just assume I can't sell now. This is back March, April. Like they just don't know. They need guidance. Right. Absolutely. We're hearing a lot of that too. I've had to educate my sellers and my partners about the fact that we are selling every home I've listed since January and February has sold. Yeah. It's crazy. It's awesome. Yeah. So um, as far as the next recession goes, how, what have you learned from 08? How have you set yourself up? How have you kind of insulated yourself to where if we do see that pullback as an agent in the agent world, we can protect ourselves with, you know, having a book of business, having our pipeline, having our database. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll from a biased standpoint, say, as I was talking to you off, off air, you mean, if I, back in my realtor days, we did a hundred homes a year. That was the volume we did with a little tiny team. If I knew how to buy and sell on terms back then, there's literally no listing appointment or buyer, except for the extremes that I couldn't help. So let me give you an example. A listing's going to expire. Like, you know, as agents, that's kind of a bummer, but it happens. There's nothing you can do. So if it's going to expire and they're running out of options, you can buy that home from them, lease purchase. You don't have to sign a bank loan. You don't have to 
time personally. And then you can, you know, fill the home with a tenant buyer that needs time, like I outlined. So there's just so many options you can do as a realtor if you understand how to buy and sell on terms. It's an enormous profit center missing right now. Yeah. And I, and that's what you wanted to talk about was the additional profit centers for realtors and the brokerages that they could be realizing if they were actually implementing some of these programs. Yeah. So I'll give you some examples, Stephanie. So just dollar wise, and you can let me know which way you want to take it. So as a realtor, I, every January I go, oh man, I got to like do a hundred homes again to hit my goals. That, that was a daunting task. Yeah. This is different. So when I, when I set up a home, one home, it can be anywhere from our average is 75 grand, but our students run from 45 to 250,000, one home. And why? Because we're getting an upfront down payment from a buyer that's non-refundable, that's payday one. Payday two is that difference between what I'm paying the seller or their mortgage and what I'm getting from my buyer each month. And then payday three is when I cash that property out with the buyer getting their loan, two, three, four, five, seven years, they all vary. But during that process, all of the principal pay down approves to the investor, me, you, whoever's doing the deal. And that's where these three paydays get super lucrative. So it's not one, one commission, one house. It's three different income streams for one deal. And so you morally and ethically go to your listing appointment and you say, look, let me look at your whole situation mm -hmm. and let me tell you what I think's best. I list it now and sell it because you need the money or you don't need the money right away. I could probably get you more and I'll buy it. It's just different. You're looking at it with their best interests in mind and they appreciate it. So if they're looking to go to another home and use down payment money from the sale of their home that with this, work. okay, okay. That's the only one that doesn't work. So my opening question is, hey, Stephanie, as a seller, yep. if I can get you your number, can you wait on the equity if they have equity? And if they say, no, I need to buy a home, I'm not your buyer, sorry. So do you have a lot of that where they're not moving into a home or and need the equity to get the down payment or About a third most of, of our the properties sellers? We've yeah, a third of about a third of the people we talk to are somewhat open to terms and don't necessarily need all the cash or okay. any of the cash. Or frankly, they have a lot of people don't have equity, so they just need closure on the debt, right? Right. Or um, they lost a job and need closure because of COVID. Or a third of the properties in the United States are debt free, so we love going to them because they typically will wait for the money if they get a better price. So, like okay. my building, we bought. I'm in my home today, but we bought our office building. 10 minutes away from here. We bought on a 20 year owner financing with the seller, so no bank involved. I did not sign personally. It's a complete owner financing deal. That Those are the great deals, why? Because he was debt free and he was open. And then what happens if the buyers that are entering into this contract with you, what if they default? Yeah, great, great question. So to you're never gonna get rid of that, I'll give you the percentage in a minute, yeah. but to safeguard against that, up front, we put them, through a regular RMLO process so that they go through a registered mortgage broker and they understand what the criteria are, even though the credit might not be in shape yet. Everything else has to line up. And then we send them to a credit repair company, enhancement company that says, okay, based on you doing these activities, fixing this, paying this down, we will have you mortgage ready in X amount of months. And I want to make sure that X fits within my terms with my seller mm -hmm. so I can make sure that they get cashed out. Now, if they don't, what are some options? Because people do have life events, right? right. Death, divorce. COVID, it's been happening. So two to 5% of the time that happens, there's a headache. And so we always wanna make sure the term is shorter than we have with the seller, so we have time to pivot. That might be calling a realtor, which we do, and say, hey, time to just sell this, we, these guys couldn't do it. Or we have way more time and we can put another tenant buyer in there and let the process go again. It just okay. depends on the term of the seller. Got it. Okay. And I was saying to you, Stephanie, before the show, like we had a realtor deal, we showed this, we did a big webinar for the Lab Code Agents Group, it's all realtors like yeah. several hundred people. And we, one of the deals we showed on purpose was a realtor friend of ours in Connecticut that refers us business, just doesn't want to learn how to do this. I don't know why, but the deal was like 86 grand to us. So we said, deal, just we'll teach you how to do it. Become a student. You can do these deals yourself. There's a lot of money laying on the table for realtors that want to learn how to do it. Awesome. I'm, it's, I, my head's still kind of spinning because I, all I do is list property. So I'm just trying to figure out the benefit to the seller is that over time they're going to make more money on the property. Is that? Yeah. The typically more them? money. Yeah. Typically more money. Um, and then it could be debt relief too, though. They could be hurt and they just need debt relief. But if there's equity there, yeah, usually more equity. Sometimes they didn't pay their transfer. And it's different than doing a buyout. So talk to me about a, a just a straight up buyout where you're literally buying them out. How's that different? Well, cause we either have to do what raise money, 
to buy it or get a bank loan, right? Or use cash. Right. Neither, neither one of those, which we'll do. We don't sign personal loans. We don't take bank and we don't solicit investors. There are some people that do that model, by the way. They'll still rent to own on the back end for the buyer, but they'll buy it like that. Like you're saying that by raising money and buying sellers out, I just don't want to deal with that. And usually it's the opposite for the seller. Usually they're not making more. They're actually making less because the investor's having to- With investors, yeah. Estimate a cut in there so that they've, you know, they they hedge so that if they hold the property longer than they expect or the market turns or something, they've, they've protected that razor thin profit they've got. So it sounds it's, like it's an inverse of that in the sense of, it actually benefits the seller monetarily if they have the time to wait. Yeah. And it's great because the calls to your point go like this. They'll be like, oh, you're an investor. Well, this won't work. You're going to want to steal it. And we say, nope, we'll pay full market value if we get our term. So the building owner that sold me the building was asking five fifty, Decent price in my eyes, about market, not a steal, not, a, not obnoxious. Yeah. I said, I'll give you every penny if I get my term, my structure. So example, we haven't talked about on an owner financing deal where they have no debt and I'm going to be paying them, we pay them monthly principal only payments. So this is how we can afford to pay top dollar because over time that principal is getting hammered. Right. Like a conventional loan. That's where the money is in these owner financing deals. Very lucrative. So if we've got agents out there listening, I don't think this is something my builder partners are going to, This I don't think this is really going to help them, but for the agents out there listening, Give us the best scenario so that if they're trying to figure out how this would work into their portfolio of options, mm -hmm. what is, when they walk into a, a living room or talk to a seller virtually, what are the things they need to listen for, for this to be something that would be an option you think? Trigger it. Yeah. Um, to the builder front first, just so you know, some builders that are set up financially well, the, so in other words, they're not paying a lot of interest costs or hard money or anything like that. If they're set up financially well, they don't need to flip that house to move the money. This is a great option because they're not paying short-term capital gains because they're pushing it out two or three years. Got so, it. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. Just side note. So now as a, as a listing appointment, if I went in, the same as I listen for, I want to know what their motivation is. Right. Because if it's not, I need this cash to go buy something else. Every other scenario I can buy with our methods. So they okay. just need to learn what terms means and what their options are. I would help them with it, but they just need to learn that and, and get comfortable with the different options so that they can morally and ethically say to the seller, hmm, based on what you told me, I got another option for you. I can actually buy it and here's how and here's how it works. You know? And for those listening, it, it, you may have already said it, but since this is just such a different idea, if, yeah. what is t define again what terms means just very basic. Yep. So you're saying yeah. it so fast and I'm thinking, I feel yeah. like I'm not really understanding what it means. That's okay. So it's totally outside the box, especially for, for realtors, right? I, I was there and I didn't know it. So it means lease purchase or owner financing. Now, lease purchase, let me say it a different way, is let's, let's make you the seller and let's say that your home's worth about 300 and we agree on that. Okay. And you owe 250 just yep. to give you some equity. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's all scenarios. And let's say your payment is um, $1,200. Okay. Okay. You don't need your 50 to go buy a home for your family. You can wait on it. You're going to go rent or you're getting a job reload or whatever. So I say, okay, and you weren't able to sell for whatever reason. You're an expired listing. I said, okay, Stephanie, I'm going to pay you your 50 grand equity that you thought you were going to get out of the home. You didn't sell, but I'm going to pay that for you. And I'm going to pay off your debt on or before, let's use 36 months. So on or before 36 months, meanwhile, I'm paying the monthly payment on their mortgage, your mortgage. I'm taking care of the upkeep and the maintenance. And at the very end, that 250 is not 250 anymore, right? Because it's three years later. Right. It's lower. So you get your 50 grand. I got all that principal paid down in the meantime. And I made money monthly too. And I don't take on that lease purchase with you paying your note until I have my buyer. So I'm not taking any unnecessary risk. And then I'm out of the house during that time? Yeah, you have to leave at the beginning of the occupancy, yes. So, so great scenario for, Hey, I got to go. I got, we had one guy that went to Texas. He was free and clear and just had to go be with his family and five kids from Connecticut. Right. Well, so that was a great deal for him. Hey, Chris, if you can give me the price, I'm out of here. Like closure. And I'll right. wait for my money. Got it. Okay. That helps. Cause we can go Thanks. fast. That's the point. Right. right. I can close after I run title. I can close quickly. We had a student in Tennessee last week, Laura, 
close in five days so that the gentleman wouldn't get hit with the, you know, the exemption to be in the home two out of five years. Right. He was going to, it was going to end Friday. She closed it for him with the title company's help. It was fast in like five days or so. Closed it on a financing. Done. And is there any criteria that you guys have? Like, you know, you don't buy a certain price point or, you know, can't be over a certain price point or it has to be a certain age of home or something like um, that. You know, it's the whole deal. That's a good question, but it's price ranges is fine. We go from, you know, hundred grand to 2 million, but it just depends on the market because the sweet spot is median, right? Right. Low, low to median because they're easy to move, but median and easy to move in DC is different than easy to move in Rhode Island, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. That helps. And then there was a note I made whenever we were talking, we were talking about operating in the current environment, current chaos. And you said something about the perfect triangle. Talk to me about what that means. It's just when COVID hit, I said, okay, I had this thing in my journal from a while ago and I just noticed it. And it was three sides of the triangle. And it was one side was, okay, find a, and this is any business, find a, like a, a cause or movement that you can get behind. Right. Then the second piece of triangle was change people's lives in that effort. And third is get paid well to do it. And so if you look at what we're doing, especially with COVID, we're taking, we're making like generational effects for people that thought either they couldn't sell because they were stuck or they could, or they get hit with COVID and lost a job. You know, all these right. buyer and seller headaches, we're helping them in a huge way. That's why our business tripled. And so at the very beginning of this, I said to you, we have realtors calling going, help, like I can't get this done. Like I'm, I'm out of options here for the seller, depending on what the scenario is. So we've got kind of like the perfect triangle going on with the terms niche inside of real estate. No question. And I, I, I just don't see it ending quickly. Right. Right. Okay. So whether you're a seller or you're a buyer, you can help either one depending on their situation. Yeah. Yeah. They're all different. That's what keeps it fun. I mean, they're all different. We get hit with deals from all over the country. I think in each one of those months, we did like 25 deals each one of those months with the students. It's a lot of deals you see, you know? Right. Right. No, and I think we'll continue to see it as people are furloughed and, you know. Unfortunately, yes. And the forbearances are coming up now. This I was going to ask you about that. Like, cause right now I think we're seeing, uh, I, I don't remember if they extended the eviction or the not evicting renters. A lot of our states extended it. Some, are yeah. it. some did, some are doing zoom court. Oh, wow. I just heard that last week. One of our states is doing zoom. They had an eviction. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So talk to me about the forbearances. What are you thinking on that? I'm thinking that people said, great. And then they band-aided it. I'm not saying with ill intent, but they right. band-aided it. And some on accident got uh, furloughed during that. Others knew they weren't going to handle it. They just said, I'll kick the can down the road. Right. I just think that shoe is going to drop like now through September, October, because the government ones, we're able to put them on the back end. Yep. Payments. That's nice. We had two of our properties we did it with. But the non-government ones, um, unless you can negotiate it, because I think the banks are unclear too. Um, I think people are going to have headaches and some sellers don't know how to do that. They don't, even, they don't, they're not comfortable calling the bank trying to negotiate that stuff, you know? Right. So I just see a lot of that needing help. And, and then, so will we break our rule with no money down? Yeah. If there's equity in the home and someone needs our help, they to, to catch that up in order to take the home over, we'll be doing some of those too. I'm sure because we have enough other deals going, you know, these paydays I talked about. Right. You can utilize them for other homes. That's the beauty once you get it going. Right. Okay. Um, and then one of the things I was told you can do a forbearance and it's supposedly not going to affect your credit, but it's going to be there as an indicator when they do pull it to notify the underwriter that you had filed a forbearance and that's not going to be looked upon favorably. Do you have I any heard, comment on that? that? And I heard no. So I don't honestly know the answer to that either. I think that's crazy if they know it on the credit, but that'd be sad for sellers. It's not right in my opinion, but yeah. Yeah. And then what are you thinking with rates? I mean, right now they're at historical lows. I'm well, assuming they're going to stay there for a while. So we're seeing a lot of buyers take advantage and sellers sell to take advantage to get something, you know. That's helping everyone right now, you, you, realtors and us. Um, I think with the election, it's probably going to maintain. I just don't see much happening before an election, right? Right. Agreed. After that, between the COVID spike and that happening, depending on which way the, the, the race goes, man, I think it could be disastrous or flat. Yeah. Who knows? 
Yeah, I know. It's housing's up and unemployment's up. So who would have thought, right? Right. And so it's not like, here's an example. I was speaking with uh, Tony Robbins' son that was coaching me for a while, January through June. And he said, very nonchalantly, like it was no big deal. Yeah, Tony was speaking with Ray Dalio the other day. And they yeah. said, that, you know, nobody knows. That's one thing for sure. And I'm like, if these guys don't know. I mean, <laughs> nobody knows. Have you read his book, that book he wrote, Money was Master it? the Game? The- oh, Tony. Tony, yes. yeah. Yeah, uh, Jarek wrote uh, Live It, which is a decent book to uh, his son. Nice. Nice. All right. So before we close up, I ask each guest five questions just to get to know you a little bit better. And then I want you to share your social media and your links. I know you've got a webinar that people can go to to find more information sure. out about the school and kind of get connected with you. But what's one thing that most people don't know about you? Um, you know, they see me speaking and on video and they're like, oh, I, I assume he's an extrovert, but I'm not. I'm usually an introvert. I just soon stay here forever and do my work, you know. I hear that a lot. I just interviewed Jay Papasan a few weeks ago and he said the exact same thing. He's like, you would think I'm an extrovert, but I have to force myself to actually engage and get myself out there. Yeah. (laughs) It's more people than you think. Yeah. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, I would say by far it's the whole, and I say this a lot, I repeat it a lot. And that is, it doesn't have to be real estate. Find a a niche or business or endeavor you want it. You can get behind, find someone in it that's done it and still doing it currently, right? Did that when I became a realtor too. And third is stick with it. This is the hard part for 36 months with blinders on. Like that's the hardest part to not get the shiny object syndrome. Uh, that's a really good point. They told me that years ago and I forget, I think it was Todd, one of my coaches, but I just stuck with it and I tell my students that. Yeah, especially today, right? Because if something doesn't happen in a week, we're like, what? It's not working. What do I need to change? Yeah, it, that's true. And so... I'm doing the terms. Chris is teaching me. Oh, I maybe I can do tax lines. Oh, maybe I can do whole. No, just right. stick to one thing. Right. And like, like stay as a realtor, but just get all your options so you can be the authority in your market that the sellers know. You know what? If I go to that realtor, they like they got options. Right. Well, I was just going to ask you. Um, this isn't one of my questions, but to piggyback off what you just said, when you have your students, are you? helping them transition out of traditional real estate and into more of this with the terms like kind of like you did or is it more they're adding to their portfolio or is it a mixed bag oh gotcha a little of both if someone catches us finds us when they're knee deep as a realtor like the whole lab coat database is pretty much active realtors they just tack it on yeah as an added profit center they go cool i i didn't know i could do that the ones that are just considering or taking some courses to get to be a realtor they usually go, okay, do I, do I really need to do that? And I, all I can do is my opinion. There's no wrong answer. Right. Right. Okay, cool. And then question, part B to question two is what's the best piece of advice you want to give the audience? Um, same as I said, those three steps, because I don't care if they're a realtor, they want to transition to this, like just stick with something and someone for 36 months and you can't have a bad experience if they're a good coach. You just can't. Yeah. It's like the only time someone messes up with us is if they quit. That's the only time you mess up because we got you. We hold, we hold their hand and do stuff with them. What's the, your favorite book or the one that's had the greatest impact on you? I can't say greatest impact because every quarter that would change. Sure. But I love um, the hard things about the hard things. It's, it's just my style is real blunt in this. I forget the author, but you'll find it. The hard things about the hard things. He's just very blunt. Like, here's what's going to happen. Here's how you deal with it. <laughs> that's how we teach our students. Like, yeah, this is not all roses. So I love right. that book for that reason. Awesome. I love it. What's your current morning routine? I do pretty much five days a week uh, workout. And now at home, it's to a, a, a video on YouTube. Uh, it's actually her name is Heather Robinson. It's, it's crazy. And after that, it's meditating um, and or yoga. And then it's just journaling some gratitude briefly, you know, five minutes at the most. Yeah. Nice. Is your workout like hit or is it weight training or what is it? She does hit. She does weight. She does a little of everything. It's Heather Robinson. My son-in-law and daughter got me on it. Okay, cool. She's got like a 12 week program. It's pretty intense, but it's only like 30 minutes. So people can do it. I love it. it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, And then last question is how do you unplug and unwind? Um, Prior to COVID, it was travel, but so now same here. (laughs) We just cut, like, I'll just cut off, like, you know, so the time blocks just like it would anywhere else. Yeah. But that is the biggest issue with our students. They'll they'll be like, we can't shut down as a couple. So yes. I, we're actually coaching them on, okay, you need to have your space here with work and home at home. Yes. I, w- I have a voicemail on my, on my voicemail that says, Hey, if you call me after this time, I'll return your call 
the next business day. I'm off these two days. I mean, that way it's very clear. I have an out of office reply on my I email. Love that. That's because, like all the expectations, yeah. right? You said. Well, and like I have a listing appointment tonight at five. Well, and I'm going to do it virtual. Well, I talked to her yesterday. Well, she's like, hey, if you want to stop by today. And I'm like, well, if you called your dentist and unless it was a crazy emergency yeah. and you were able to get in the same day, what's the worst? What are you going to think? Right. Right. So yeah. I always tell people like I I'm booked. I mean, you're calling me. I can talk, but I got other appointments to get to. I've got yeah, I agree hundred percent, you know, to have some structure, but I think I'll, there's a lot of work to be done in our industry. So yeah. how do people find you if they are interested in adding some of your things to their portfolio, if they want to get introduced to your school and kind of some of your teachings and get plugged in? Sure. So the easiest way is just the website, smartrealestatecoach.com. On there okay. is the free webinar. They can just register. Um, if they don't mind dealing with listening to me for an hour, they can go through the webinar. Uh, the book you showed, if you want, I'll give a link. We used to ship it. Instead this of them one? going to Amazon, but they can get the electronic version if they want. Uh, you want me to give one of the links? Yeah. And I'll it's put it in the just, show notes. I've got both. I've got what? The real estate on your terms and then the new rules of real estate investing. I tell you what, I'll do. I usually give one. I'll give both links. You can put them in the show notes. It's um, okay. the real estate in terms is free, srecbook.com. And the new rules that I wrote with my son and son in law is new rules for the number four, free.com. I'm going to double check that second one, but I pretty think I'm right. I'm sorry. It's FOR. My bad. New rules for free. FOR free. And that and way they can get both. We used to ship. Again, I used to only give out one, but with electronic, I don't mind giving it. No, that's cool. And then we appreciate that. And then the first link, it's free, srcbook.com. S-R-E-C for Smart Real Estate Coach. S-R-E-C. Okay. It's the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, not yours. No, I'm teasing. Awesome. Anything else you want to add before we close up the show today? No, I think that's it. I think just mindset, just know that you can add, you can tack this on to what you're currently doing or yeah. if you're not a currently a realtor, you can, you can start it either way. And it, do you have to be licensed to use it? I'm assuming you do. No, 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 no because you only ever buy and selling your own properties, just like a FISBO would. Same thing. Got it. Okay. Good to know. So if you're yeah. not licensed, you don't have to be. So that's why you're saying if someone's starting classes, they may switch gears. Yeah. They may say, do I want gotcha. to go through the hoops? Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank I, you. I appreciate it. Stephanie. Thanks, Stephanie. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode with Chris and got some value out of it. I enjoyed hearing how he helps his students work with buyers and sellers in a unique way, regardless of their situation. So if you'd like to check out the books that Chris was talking about, you can go to free srecbook.com or newrulesforfree.com. And I'll also put those in the show notes at theglamgirlboss.com forward slash podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. If you haven't sent in an online review, we would love your feedback on iTunes. And then if you haven't joined the Facebook group, you can join the insiders group at theglamgirlboss.com forward slash Facebook. Let us know what you enjoyed about the show today and we'll chat soon guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.